just do some of the ventral musculature in the forearm, we're at 1855, so we're looking at the capitellum. Here we are looking at the hyaline cartilage over the capitellum. You can also appreciate the brachialis and the brachioradialis muscles. Radial head. Here we're going a little bit distally, and you can see the supinator muscle overlying the radial head. Head, supinator muscle, and then we're just going to follow that down. See the brachial radialis muscle above it. And again, that big muscle overlying the radius is your brachial radialis muscle. Now we're just going towards the wrist. Here we can start seeing the tendon form of the brachialis as it inserts on the distal aspect of the radius. Going proximally now, you can see that interosseous membrane between the radius and the ulna. So here you can see a fair amount of structures. You can see the median nerve between the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus muscles, as well as between the flexor pollicis on this muscle. And here we are going a little bit distally. You can appreciate those muscles again. Also appreciate the radial artery and the superficial radial nerve underneath the brachioradialis muscle. Here we're a little bit proximal. You can see some of the major blood vessels, such as the ulnar artery and the radial artery, but at this point it's a little bit hard to tease them out. But you can appreciate the median nerve and the overlying flexor musculature. See the median nerve between the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. Again, the median nerve is hyperechoic in this part of the arm, whereas in the carpal tunnel, it's actually hypoechoic. So here's a kind of close-up view. You can see the tendons beginning to form the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle and the flexor digitorum profundus. You can see the pronator quadratus muscle, which basically the fibers go about 90 degrees to the other muscles in the forearm. Let me go proximal now. Here again, we're looking at that median nerve as we're going proximally up the forearm. And here you can actually see the ulnar artery going from an ulnar to radial direction as we're going proximal. And here you can see the pronator teres ulnar head that's that. sitting between the median nerve and the ulnar artery. Here you can see the ulnar artery. It's actually migrating in a radial direction as it goes proximal. And again, you can appreciate the two heads of the pronated teres muscle. Also, you may be able to tease out the common interosseous artery branching off the ulnar artery as you go proximal, but difficult to really tease out here. Radial head, supinator muscle. which is gliding no, pretty distal. quickly, distally. We can follow that median nerve in the middle of the screen, that hyperechoic circle it's going superficial right now, and it looks like it's going in a radial direction. Okay, now we're getting Very nice. closer to the wrist. Start seeing the flexor pollicis longus tendon form within that muscle surrounding it. And you have the flexor carpi radialis tendon superficial to the carpal tunnel. You can also see the very thin oval palmaris longus tendon superficial to the median nerve. And here it appears that there's actually a bifid median nerve which occurs in about 3% of the population and usually it splits towards the distal end of the transverse carpal ligament. And here again you can appreciate a bifid median nerve.